Hey everyone, today we are going to talk through real and virtual images as they appear on the MCAT. Um, so our learning objective will be, um, after this lesson, to be able to identify whether the image formed by a lens or mirror is real or virtual, inverted or upright, and larger or smaller than the object being imaged. Um, so what this will do is help us answer questions like this one, which pop up on the MCAT, which is, a converging lens has a focal length of 10 centimeters. Will the image created by an object 15 centimeters from the lens be real or virtual, inverted or upright? larger or smaller than the original object. Um, and so this is the question that we're gonna come back to um, at the end of the video um, and be able to answer. And so at the end, we'll um, come back and use the mnemonic that we developed, but first we're gonna um, start from the principles and build up to that mnemonic um, so that when you're using that later on that you understand exactly what's going on with that. Um, okay, so here is our gorgeous apple. Um, so what's going on is light is striking this apple um, and it's creating like um, refractive, like it's creating a ton of different light rays emerging from that. So we're just going to take as it choose a spot on this apple and say maybe um, from that spot there are these two rays that are going off um, and then that is going into your eyeball. Um, so let's give you a nice little eyeball there. Um, and so that's going into your eyeball. So what is your eyeball perceiving? So it gets these kind of like little arrows of light, right? So it, it's receiving um, some of this light and it knows the angle that it's on, but it doesn't, it can't see the whole ray, right? It just knows that there's light coming in at this angle. So what does it do? It calculates backwards um, and it sort of overlays um, these paths. Um, and then your eye is able to tell you like, oh, okay, out here there's an apple um, and it identifies that. Um, so where these light rays converge is where your eye perceives it to be. So um, we've got a real image real image, and we're going to say perceived image is where light rays actually um, converge. Um, okay, so let's take the opposite of that. When does that not happen? Um, all right, so right here, we've got a plane mirror. Um, and again, we're just going to take a spot on our apple. Um, and we're going to draw a couple of lines. They're going to bounce right back off our plane mirror, right? Um, and come out over here. Um, OK, so um, let's go back and draw another eye. Um, and so this eye, again, right, it's taking in these arrows, and it's making a prediction. Um, based on the angle of those, um, it traces these guys back, but it doesn't know to stop at the mirror, right? So we go way over here. And we go way over here. Oh, we got to go a little bit longer. Um, and then somewhere over here, right, um, this is where um, your eye, we're going to make it purple because it's not the same, but we're going to say your eye sees an apple over there, right? It'll still be red, but we're going to say this is our virtual image, right? Um, and why is it a virtual image? Um, perceived image is not where. Um, light rays actually converge. Um, there we go. Um, I think I spelled perceive incredibly wrong. <laughs> Perceived image um, is where light rays actually converge. All right. Um, so Moving on to starting to talk about lenses and not just talking about this like more generally, um, we've got diverging systems are the first ones that we like to talk about makes it a little bit easier. Um, so we've switched to having an arrow as our image here, and that makes things just a little bit simpler. Um, but let's say that this is coming in and oh, um, that is bouncing off of our mirror here, um, and we're creating a light ray right like that. And then maybe we've got one that's coming down here. Um, and then bouncing off and heading that direction. So we're gonna need a huge eyeball here um, to encompass this. All right, there's our big eyeball. Um, so what is it getting? It's getting these arrows, right? That are hopefully going into our eyeball. Um, and it's tracing those guys back. So where do those guys trace back to? They trace back to there. So now we can answer our three questions and where these light rays intersect that's where we're going to get our little image. Um, and it builds up from this like central plane of access that of that mirror. Um, but we've got this little guy. Is he bigger or smaller? He's definitely smaller. Um, he's upright. Um, and because those light rays don't actually converge there, probably getting good at this by now, that is a virtual image. Um, all right, let's talk about a concave lens. What does that guy do? 
Um, so if we've got this guy coming in um, a concave lens, I'll delete that way out there. And this one, I'll just like keep on going right through the middle of it, won't have any impact. Um, and so if we've got a big eyeball again, um, it's gonna be something huge. Um, where is our eyeball tracing these back to? It's gonna be right in here. So where's our arrow? He's right there. Um, and then I'll, um, we have it again, where we've got our little tiny arrow is smaller. Oh, right. Virtual. So both of these are diverging systems, right? Um, they reflect light, so it sort of spreads out, um, either reflect or refract. And what we want to remember is SUV. Um, so like like your car, it's kind of like your car mirror. So if you got smaller, upright, and virtual. Um, and so if you've got a diverging system, convex mirror, or a concave lens, you can just remember SUV. All right. We're going to get into converging systems. So converging systems can be a little bit more tricky. Um, and we're going to go ahead and, and talk through how to tackle those. Um, and we're going to sort of build up our mnemonic right here um, using some of our different cases. But first, we have to talk about F, the focal length. What is that? So if we've got a light ray coming in parallel um, to our lens, I think it right through there, it'll get um, refracted right through um, the middle of that focal length. Um, and so that's what it means. Parallel light ray goes right through um, the focal length. Um, and so we'll get rid of those so that we can start building up um, our mnemonic. And our mnemonic relies on the focal length in twice focal length. And then we're going to use that to identify what our images look like, where they are in relation um, to the focal length of our lens. Um, and so uh, Let's go ahead and talk about how we draw ray diagrams so that we can get into that um, because it'll help. So let's go ahead and we'll just put a little arrow um, right in the middle over here. Um, and so the first thing that we do, as it says, there's draw line parallel to the central axis of the lens. Um, so what does that guy do? He comes parallel to this axis, right? Um, and we just talked about what a parallel light do when it hits that lens, it gets redirected through the focal length. So there's the focal length there. Um, and then we're going to draw another one that just goes right through the middle of the lens. We're going to draw it all the way out to where it intersects. Um, and then we are going to get a little arrow. I mean, it's a little hard to tell, but that guy's just a tiny um, bit bigger. But the main thing is parallel line and then right through the center of your lens. Um, okay. So let's talk about the 2F case. What does that look like? What sort of... Um, uh, image are we going to get in terms of size, um, orientation, and real or virtual. Um, so here's our arrow. Um, we're going to draw our first of these couple light rays. So we're going to go through here, and then we're going to go down through F. I think it's important to note um, that no matter where we put our arrow, right, that line's going to be the same. Uh, right, as long as we're putting our arrow, um, it's going to come here and it's going to go right down through F. It'll be it'll be the same every single time. Um, so we've got that guy going, um, and then we need another light ray, and this light ray is the one that goes right through the middle, and then intersects. And where is that going to intersect? Two um, F is a special case um, because the image will be the same size and located at two. F um, again, right? Um, so this is where we get an arrow, and it looks just the same. So we get the same size. You can see that it's inverted, um, and that actually will be a real image. Um, and so uh, there's something that's a little bit funky going on where we've got our eye will be out over here. Um, and this guy continues, right? And so our eye is going to perceive this, it's going to track these guys back, and it thinks that the image is right there. Um, so the actual object is over there, but that's not the definition of a real or a virtual image. Um, we are, we our perceived image is where um, the light rays actually converge, so we're totally good to go. That's a real image. Okay, the F case. So we're talking about an object that is at um, the focal length. So that's something that's right here. Let's go ahead and make it an arrow. Um, so we draw our first light ray. And it goes here, uh, goes right here, and then down through F. And 
then our second one will come right through the middle. But you may be able to notice, right? Um, this goes from the top of our arrow down to the focal length. Where does this go? It goes from focal length to the lens. So these two lines have the exact same slope. They're never going to converge. So this will create an awful lot of confusion for our eye, which will try to trace them back. Um, but it simply doesn't get anywhere because those are just parallel. So it never even creates an image. Um, so right at F, super weird. Um, no image is formed at all. Um, and then, but what's going to happen between and outside of those? So let's go back and let's build this up. So we know what happened at 2F and we know um, what happened exactly at F. Um, but actually what's going to happen right in the middle so we're going to get an image that is larger, upright, oh, sorry, inverted, and real. Um, and that's because that line that comes um, down from the, the parallel one through the F, um, and then the line that goes through the middle of the lens, will sort of stretch out um, and they're going to have similar slopes. So they have totally same slope at F, right? Um, but they're going to have similar enough slopes that it stretches out um, where that image actually appears. And it appears pretty far away and it's, it's taller than um, the actual object we're imaging. But in the inverse, when we move um, longer away than 2F, um, the slope um, of the of the original line that's that's just from that parallel line um, will be significantly greater than this one. Um, so we're actually going to have an image that that becomes smaller. So we're going to get smaller, inverted, and real images. Um, and then inside of F, let's go ahead and draw it out inside of F right here. Um, We're going to do it right here. We'll just add on a set of arrows. So we'll draw a little green arrow. Um, and he's going to have orange light rays um, that are going to come parallel. Um, and then through F. And then we're going to have one straight down. But this line actually has a steeper slope. Um, so you can't quite see in the diagram, uh, but these are diverging as they go down into the right, and they're converging up into the left. Um, so if we've got an eye down here, uh, tracing these guys back, um, it's going to trace it back, and we're going to get a image of our green arrow somewhere over here, um, where these guys are followed back. Um, and it'll probably be even bigger than I've drawn it, but yeah. Um, so then under um, under our focal length, we get bigger, upright. But because this is this is sort of a lie, these these light rays don't actually converge up over there, right? This is when we have our virtual images um, from these converging systems. So. Um, the mnemonic that we like to use is sir, er, above. And so we've got outside 2F, smaller, inverted, real. Between 2F and F, bigger, inverted, real. Small enough, bigger, upright, and virtual. Um, and you can, you can see how that lays out there. And our server above mnemonic gets us there. Um, this is also true um, for convex mirrors, um, or sorry, concave mirrors. Um, so something that's going to look like this um, and reflect light rays down. Um, it'll actually have all of the same properties. It follows this server above model. Uh, and I'll let you draw those out for yourself, but you can see um, how that works out. So let's jump back and use our server above to, to do this first question. Um, so a converging lens has a focal length of 10 centimeters. All right, let's draw that out. Um, so our converging lens is going to look like this guy. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a central axis. Um, and we're going to give it an image. And we'll just say that the image is an arrow. It always makes things a bit simpler. Um, how far away is our arrow? It's at 15 centimeters. 
one five centimeters. And then where's our focal length? It's only a 10 centimeters. Um, and then we can go ahead and put on double focal length at 20 centimeters. We'll make that 2F. This guy's F. We've got sir, for both. So what is that image going to look like? It's going to be bigger. Upright. Oh, inverted. And virtual. Right? Because we are looking right here, and it's in between our F and our 2F. Um, all right, I hope this helped. Thank you guys so much for watching.